So, let me get mine. Then, y'all want to take a selfie? Look, it's all of them. Okay. Now that I'm going, I can upload that to the whole interwebs and prove that I have a brain. I'm pretty sure all of us here have Wi-Fi, yeah? All right, so let's do uh, some crowd surveying. How many of us have a smartphone? All right, how many of us parents bought our child a smartphone? That child who was like under 15? Under 11? Under 10? Okay, now how many of us have a older brother or sister, spouse, auntie or uncle, somebody in our house that comes home every night, grabs their internet device, and disappears into the internet for the rest of the evening? Yeah, this is the part where you guys all look around the room and go, oh, I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> so at the 46 schools that I went to this year before September, 98% of the children who I asked that question to raised their hands. What does that tell me? That we live in an increasingly distracted society. And um, that's like really problematic for me. One of my friends, uh, Cyrus Moses, who's actually here today, he was like, you know what, they should like invent an app that alerts you when you start ignoring all the people in the room who love you. <laughs> and maybe they should make an app that tells you when the light turns green. Because I'll be sitting at the light on my motorcycle in this helmet, and I'll look in my rear view, and some fool's car is like rolling slowly up behind me. And I'm like, why is that happening? Because that person is looking at their phone. I know everybody stopped laughing then. They were like, yeah, you could have died. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. These phones are actually really powerful tools. Like, after you log 200 hours with the driving school, and then you log another 70 hours driving with your parents, and like 10 hours driving at night, and then you got to go to the driving school and take their test, and then to the DMV to take their test, and you have to be 16, they will give you this card that says, you are now licensed to operate 2,000 pounds of rubber and steel with an exploding gas tank on the back of it. Have a nice day. <laughs> so you got to get all trained up to do that, right? But you can't drive your car to Samoa. You can't drive your car to New Zealand. But I can get on my phone right now and Skype with my cousins in Samoa. I can get on my phone right now, pop open the Periscope app, and watch somebody walking around Auckland, New Zealand. I can also take a picture of myself, put it up on Facebook, and have my mother in Utah comment on it in seconds. I would argue that this tool is probably as powerful as your vehicle, your car. Takes you places, but did anybody get a class on how these things actually work? Yeah, because we don't, no, we don't do that. Here, kid, have one. Good. All right, have a nice day. Goodbye. Now, the reason I bring that up is because our, our society is now facing some very interesting problems around bullying, cyberbullying, sexting, and it's not just the youth's fault. All of us parents went out and jumped in to these devices because of a lot of social pressures that we as families were feeling to make sure our kid wasn't left out. And then we ask ourselves, why is this stuff happening? There is a level of emotional maturity that you should develop before you start using this, but we're going to have to start in the middle. For instance, did you know that your phone tells people where you took every single one of your pictures? I know, like the, little the youngest kids in the room are all, I knew that! <laughs> so I'm going to open up my selfie in this thing called an EXIF wizard. And an EXIF wizard reads the metadata that's embedded in all of the video and uh, still photos that you take with your electronic devices. So Megan, can I borrow you for a second? So I opened it up, and Megan, could you press that map button, please? Hey, where'd that pin just get dropped? Somewhere in Albuquerque. How about? Uh, Central and 7th. Where's that? I'm guessing here. That's right, thank you, Megan. So 
all of y'all parents who got the 13 or 14 year old son or daughter who wakes up in the morning and <gasps> this is me waking up. <gasps> this is me eating my Cheerios. What's up, Cheerios? This is me driving to school with mom and she hates driving. What's up, mom? And then you get to school, then you're like, I have arrived. Well, you know that 15 year old that you friended last week, child, who moved here to Albuquerque and is like looking for some new friends, and so you friended them because they were kind of cute. Did you actually know who you were talking to? That's a negative, Ghost Rider. But why does that matter? Because in your town, two years ago, a 13-year-old young lady thought she met her boo online. But he's 16 and I'm 13, so I'm gonna go meet him somewhere public because then if he's crazy, I can just run away. Well, she met him somewhere public, but it turned out to be a man in his mid-40s. And he grabbed all 90 pounds of her, chucked her into his car, and drove back to his house and sexually assaulted her for the next two weeks. And then he kicked her back out on the street. She spent a month in the hospital. I got to her school to do this, this presentation six months later. She hadn't been back. So, the danger <clears throat> is real enough that law enforcement has designated a group of police officers to deal specifically with that. And that's the Internet Crimes Against Children Unit. The head of the Internet Crimes Against Children Unit is Anthony Mays, and he works for the New Mexico Attorney General's Office. He assisted me in making this initial presentation. But here's the thing. There is enough of that kind of crime going on that the police are like, that's only going to be your job, officer. You deal with this kind of stuff. Now, nobody wakes up in the morning, takes out their phone, and looks at it and goes, you know what? Somebody's going to die today because of the way that I use this thing. But in the case of Audrey Pott, a 15-year-old in California who is very self-conscious of her body image, she decided one Friday night to go to a party. She got drunk at the party. And she was sexually assaulted by a group of football players. And they wrote all kinds of like horrible things on her body with markers. And then they took out their cameras and took pictures of her. The following week, they put these pictures out on the internet and spread them throughout the school. And Audrey Pot, the sensitive young lady who she was, succumbed to the face-to-face -face bullying and the cyberbullying and ended up hanging herself. Now, none of those football players probably thought that when I take out this phone today, the way I use it is going to end somebody. That's why, as parents, we need to teach our kids to be good digital citizens. You have this body of flesh and blood where you're a citizen here on the planet Earth with other human beings in the country of the United States of America where you have rights and obligations. But you have to be a good citizen in this body. And now, we spend so much of our lives online that we've developed digital citizenship. But that doesn't start when you're 18. It starts when mom or dad bought you this device. And that might have been when you were eight. Parents, we owe it to the safety of our children to teach them how to develop the correct emotional intelligence to use the internet and to use these devices. And to the youth, you owe it to yourself and your peers to develop the emotional intelligence to not misuse the power of the internet or this device. The internet and this phone can take you places that you've never probably dreamed that you could go physically. It can tell you things that you would never learn if you were born 10 years ago. You're the first generation to be born with all the knowledge of mankind at your, fingertip, at your fingertips. Thank you, Google, brain in the sky. But you have to use it responsibly. Because, yo, man, you got to be smarter than your phone. 